What up gamers and book lovers? Today on Dice and Dragons we are continuing our Tales From series and today it is Tales From the Tome as Navu Games is going to be producing this lovely game that has just popped into the air in front of me. I'm using my superpowers as you know because we're talking today about superheroes and supervillains or just regular heroes fighting supervillains? Well, we are talking about the Reckoner series and because of this upcoming cooperative game, well, we here at Dyson Dragons decided we are going to be reviewing all of the Reckoner series by Brandon Sanderson, starting out with that awesome book that you can see over to my right, Steelheart. Now we will be doing individual reviews on all of the books, including the novella Mitosis. The reason for that is Nauvoo Games has planned some expansions focusing in on the cities such as Babylon that are featured in the other books. So we felt that with the expansions and the series, we'll do it one for one because I'd like to get a good chance to maybe compare how those adaptations uh, actually work. Now with that being said, let's not waste too much more time with the introduction. Let's get to talking about Steelheart. So as we always do, we're in Dice and Dragons. We're going to grab our drink. We're going to grab our book. Yes, I know, digital book. It's a Kindle, like the travel, so I've been converted. And let's talk about Steelheart. So keep it right here. Now let's talk about Steelheart. Now the way we're going to break down this review is we're going to start with talking about the, the setting and the story. We'll take a look at our characters, the heroes, and the villains. Then we'll just discuss what we like and what we dislike about the book. And during that course of that discussion, we'll probably talk a little bit about Brandon Sanderson's uh, writing style. And then end up with our final score for the book. Now let's talk about the story and the setting. While the book opens up with our young protagonist, David Charleston, he is at the bank with his father when the bank is attacked by an epic named Death Point. Now what are the epics? Well, not many people know. Essentially, at that point in the book when, the, when we start, it's only been about two years since a red star started shining in the sky called Calamity. Now, when Calamity showed up, regular people started developing superpowers. Didn't matter how old you were, 5, 12, 65, epics got powers. Now the difference between, you know, your typical story with superheroes and supervillains, no superheroes showed up. Everyone that got powers became inherently evil. And that's why the world was terrified of epics. Now, during the course of the encounter at the bank, it is what led to the ascension of Steelheart in Chicago, where he basically transforms large parts of the city into pure steel. Don't necessarily want to spoil for you guys how it happens, but this is just part of the overall setting. And he really starts off the first sort of city-state that is under his control. Steelheart renamed Chicago New Cargo, and from that point on, the epics start rising up, taking what they want, setting up their own city-states, and large sections of the you know, the whole world kind of fall apart. Fast forward 10 years, we are now in the fractured states of America, as the common people call it. There is still some forms of government, but not much. Mostly everything is controlled by the epics, and the setting for this story is New Cargo, the name that uh, Steelheart is given to Chicago, as he and his cadre of epics most importantly, the, the three main ones, we've got Night Wielder, Fireflight, and Conflux, have taken over New Cargo and set it up as probably the most desirable place to live in the fractured states. But if you're not an epic, you're treated lower than dirt, and pretty much anything is tolerated. If an epic wants something, they get it. The common people live either in the slum zone as the understreets, basically catacombs and rooms that are carved out of the pure steel underbelly of Chicago, while now New Cargo. And we then rejoin David on his story. David is looking for the Reckoners. Now the Reckoners are a group of assassins, maybe you want to call them rebels, paramilitary, They've got different cells throughout the country, and what the Reckoners do is the Reckoners kill epics. They hunt down the worst of the worst and kill them. David, ever since uh, the events of the bank, 
Don't want to spoil it for you guys. You're going to find out uh, very quickly what happens. Has been looking for a way to get revenge on Steelheart and then decides he's going to join the Reckoners. Now through a certain series of events where David encounters Megan, who is a very important standout character, and she's going to be a big part of the entire series except for uh, the novella Mitosis. He then, after encountering Megan, meets up with the Reckoners and then convinces them that they need to take on Steelheart because it's time for common people to strike back and someone needs to change the way things are going in the fractured states of America. And that's really the setup for the story. That's as spoiler light uh, as I can make it. And you'll find out the rest by picking up the book and actually reading it. Now let's talk about the characters. So the first character we have is David Charleston, who is your main protagonist. Now David has been studying epics all of his life. He worked at a factory and has spent you know, all of the meager resources that he got uh, when he was a child worker at this factory, researching epics, buying pictures and trying to figure out their weaknesses because like all superheroes and supervillains, epics have weaknesses and the only way to kill them is by exploiting their weaknesses, which is what the, the Reckoners do with months of study. And David has always idolized the Reckoners as they're doing the, something that he's always wanted to do since that day in the bank, which is fight back. Now David is definitely a little bit sheltered and immature as a character, which does sort of work because he did grow up as a child worker in a factory. But there are some things I don't like about David. Uh, he can be a little too naive, almost to the point where it's a little bit unbelievable. But I do like the fact that he is terrible with metaphors. He has a very distinct personality and a good heart. Brandon Sanderson has done a great job of developing this character, especially if he's gonna be our main character driving us through the entire Reckoner series. And the one thing you have to say about David is that he is very intelligent. And he's the one that figures out a lot of the epic's weaknesses and without many resources was able to do a lot by himself. Next we have Megan. Megan is that typical, beautiful, capable girl that you see in a lot of YA fiction these days. And I say typical just because of the way that she's described. Now personality wise, she's got a very interesting personality. At some point she can be very cold, calculating and standoffish. She's got her own reasons for the way that she is, but she also has this very sweet understanding and logical part to her. And I really like the way that her character is developed. Quite early on, you can see that David develops a thing for Megan. And how that plays out is going to be a key part of the rest of this book. And I don't want to talk too much more about it, but it will, because it will delve more into spoiler territory. Next, we have Prof. Jonathan Fiedris, the founder of The Reckoners, he is very much your typical cold, calculating, standoffish character when we meet him, but there is definitely a good heart to prof, and the more we find out about him as the story goes along, he really kind of opens up, and it's quite clear why David sees him as a mentor figure, but we also very much understand why Prof is reticent to maybe let David join the Reckoners in the first place, what type of responsibility he'd be taking on, and the main reason why the Reckoners are sort of this shadowy group that only strikes when they've done months and months of planning. Now, he's a fantastic character. There is a lot of really cool subtle hints that Brandon Sanderson drops about him and his, you know, his past as you go through the book. Pay attention to them. They're going to be very, very crucial. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about the side characters. Now first you have Tia, which is Prof's, you know, assistant, their team's doctor, as well as their sort of head scientist and, well not head scientist, it's the head of research. Tia does a lot of the research on epics, has a lot of the contacts, and she's also very good at hacking into systems and basically providing teams with the in-base support. Now she isn't that well developed in the in Steelheart. The key focus is definitely primarily on David and Prof. But the one thing that you do have is there is a distinct character to Tia. You can tell the way she feels 
about the team and the way that she grows to respect and come to rely on David throughout the course of the story is does have some very motherly qualities and I do really enjoy her character and as I've only finished this book and Mitosis, I'm looking to see more from her as the story goes along. Next we've got really the two side characters of Cody and Abraham. Now you may be wondering why I'm talking about them both at the same time. Well, both characters are distinct. They both sort of serve that, a, a diff, that same role, but they're still different. They're very much David's brothers in the story. They're the family that he never had with Abraham being the one that is very supportive of David. He trusts him. He's often impressed by David. And he's more than willing to uh, lend a helping hand and also just be sort of a sounding board for David and his ideas. And he's definitely the heart of the team. There's really something special about Abraham. I do love the fact that he is French Canadian and the way they play up on those small elements of that character, of that characteristic and that background throughout the course of Steelheart and has been, uh, was very much appreciated being someone that is from Montreal and I felt that they very much got it right. Now Cody is sort of the other brother, the wacky brother, the slapstick one. He is a Scotsman but he doesn't take life too seriously. He has a surprisingly tragic backstory that you find out more through reading the book but the way his levity sort of gets infused throughout the team, the way he doesn't take things seriously, well not everything seriously but a lot of things, really helps ground people in the moment and really I think he's almost a part of the Reckoners that keeps him sort of human. And he's a very important character and I really liked him throughout the course of this book. Now that we've talked about the heroes, let's talk about the villains. Now, Steelheart, Nightwheeler, Conflux, and Firefight, for most of the book they are relegated to the background. We don't see a lot of them in the book. Primarily we encounter Nightwielder and I thought that actually worked very well because it makes sense to have Steelheart be standoffish and sort of removed from the story. The story does well enough with the introduction part of the book, the setting of New Cargo, and the things that the team discovers about Steelheart to really well develop his character. There's also uh, a nice presence for him and we get to see more of his character in the final battle. Something that if they hadn't done, I would have definitely not enjoyed, but they do handle it uh, very well. Firefight gets very much pushed to the background uh, in this story, but still has some pretty cool, uh, cool elements. I'm not gonna talk much more about Firefight uh, in this review. For anyone that's looked up the Reckoners as a series, you'll know there is another book called Firefight, so you can be expecting to find out uh, some more in that book specifically. Well, Conflux is a vef definitely a cool epic, especially in terms of their, their powers, their importance to the story. And we do get a nice twist with Conflux. And I'll just advise people that when the twist shows up, pay attention to it. It's some really cool foreshadowing for the rest of the story. And Nightwheeler, I would say, is almost our primary antagonist besides Steelheart. He has the most interactions with the team. He's very threatening. And I like the way that he's sort of used as that representation of Steelheart's regime, what the heroes are fighting against. We get a little bit of it early on with some minor characters like Fortuity, but Nightwheeler is essentially everything wrong with New Cargo in a nutshell and explains why despite New Cargo being a place where things are better than the rest of the fractured states, people really need to fight back. Likes and dislikes, that's where we're going right now and I'll try to split it up nice and neatly but as you know when you're having a discussion it's not uh, the easiest thing to do. Now this is a YA novel and it does, you know, sort of I would say it surpasses the genre in many ways, but there is also some YA tropes. Now, I, this is not my first experience with reading Brandon Sanderson, especially in the YA field. I have read The Rhythmatist before, and that gives me a little bit of an interesting perspective on Steelheart. I do believe he wrote The Rhythmatist afterwards, eagerly awaiting the sequel to that, uh, by the way. Now let's talk about my, my likes. I do really enjoy the characters, all of them across the board. They're very well developed, they have distinct personalities, and you can really tell that 
they were the heart of the story. This is where Brandon Sanderson spent most of his energy, in my opinion, besides developing uh, the fractured states. But in Steelheart, we only get a little bit of the background. The characters are really the heart of the story and driving everything forward. Now, I do like David's character. He's definitely an 18-year-old uh, kid. And there are some moments where that really becomes uh, more apparent than I would have liked. But at the same point in time, David is very capable. He's focused on a goal and he's very mature. And I do like the fact that we don't really see that much, I'd say, like teen angst. In this YA novel, everyone's got a purpose. Characters are moving forward and they have issues and things that have happened to them, but they don't dwell on it. And I think that's really one of the strongest points of the book. The setting is very well done in terms of New Cargo. I really like the descriptions in the writing, the villainous epics, their different powers, and the fact that we are in a world without superheroes and regular people need to be the heroes. That I thought was a very good twist. And those are my primary likes about the book. It's also very well written and easy to read. This story flows nicely together. Now what I don't like about the book is I'd say the times that the YA tropes in the book kind of really show up and that's really more so with David and Megan's interactions, I don't really like it. It feels a little bit too generic for me. I get where David's coming from, but it seems very childish. Now that could just be because I'm having a hard time necessarily imagining David is having no experience with women uh, at all, but that's the way he's presented and he's very goofy and silly. But there is some charm to it, but just overall I think it was just a little overly awkward. Now when it comes to Megan as a character, I did like her a lot in many ways, but in some ways I felt that she was just as naive and silly as David, and that's something that I didn't particularly enjoy at times. But overall, I do think that she's got a little bit better character development and she's a little bit more focused than David. And perhaps it's the fact that Brandon was pairing the two together that I just didn't really necessarily enjoy that pairing all of the time. I guess maybe I just didn't see what was what, why David was so obsessed with Megan. Now the other thing that I don't like is the way that a lot of things are foreshadowed. There's a lot of foreshadowing in the book. If you've got, you know, if you really pay attention to it, bit by bit, you're going to see exactly where everything is going. Now I think one of the reasons why I'm a little bit more critical of this than I would be if this was my first experience with Brandon Sanderson in terms of why is just how well he did everything in The Rhythmatist where he avoids a lot of these tropes and writes a story that is clearly focused on young adult readers but can be enjoyed by everyone and the characters are even better, clearer, and the story has none of the typical YA tropes I found in it. And that's one of the things that I think that Steelheart at least falls into more than I would like. That being said, I think we've covered my likes and dislikes well enough so that I can give the book a score. Now I'm going to give the book a solid 7, well I was thinking 7, it's going to actually be 7.5. 7.5 out of 10, it's a very good novel. The spin on the superhero like novels, the setting real heroes versus only just super villains, and when I mean real he heroes, I mean real normal people versus villains. Love it, it's very well done, it's written well, it's an easy read and the story is interesting and engaging. So I hope you guys did enjoy our review of Steelheart and you can expect to see some more stuff coming up. We shall have some videos popping up to links to stuff related to this video just up above my head. You can also find up some more information about us, some upcoming videos down below in the video description by following our social media feeds. And as always on Dice and Dragons, we are going to grab our drink. Grab our book. We're going to put our feet up and keep enjoying the Reckoner series. So hopefully we'll see you back for the next review.